thank you very much for coming. I see a lot of familiar faces, which is uh, nice. So uh, while I give here my own uh, views, uh, I see a few other maintainers. So if you like to add something, um, you're welcome. I, I also want to have this as part of a discussion because this is really a lot about uh, the development process where the I2C subsystem will be a case study, but um, I think a lot of things I will show is, uh, is uh, true for the whole Linux kernel these days, or at least uh, for subsystems dealing with drivers. So my name is Wolfram Zhang. I'm hacking on the Linux kernel like since 2008. Uh, since late 2012, I think I'm the I2C maintainer. And currently I'm a self employed consultants, mainly working for Renesas uh, upstream team, bringing new SOCs into the Linux mainline. But a lot of things I'm talking about will be like my experience as an I2C maintainer. Uh, so I'm mainly wearing that hat right now. And the loose structure of this talk is uh, I will give a short overview, which is why we, the, about the current situation, which is like a short summary of the talk I've given last week at the LinuxCon about scaling problems uh, in the Linux kernel I see. Some results of that, what you as a developer can do to get your patches upstream better, and also give you an idea what all this means for the I2C subsystem currently, because a, th a few things will change like from now on. So, um, I really like to, to mention this, uh, to quote Trent, Trent Mucklebust with discussion about a role of a maintainer and what a maintainer has to do is really old. So this quote is like from 2012 or 11, I think. And uh, so maintainers are given a lot of duties. It, it has grown this way, you, you see them. Um, and when the patch count was not as huge as it is today, that was somehow scaling. People were, maintainers always had support from, from their list, but um, in general, it came down that they, they were all, all this in one person and they could keep up with that. But now we have current trends and now you will see a lot of graphs, <laughs> which uh, I was data mining the last days and weeks. This is a pretty easy one, number of commits which a lot of zigzags, so allow me to make a small linearized function out of that. Uh, and this is not a surprise probably to you. Uh, patch count is going up. If we, just to give you some idea, the left side, I started accounting at version 3.0, which is roughly around 2011. And this is where the right side is version 4.8, so pretty recently, um, where we are about today. And this is the amount of patches going from a little over 2000, so we're approaching 14,000 patches per cycle. This is the amount of patches which needs to be handled, and uh, I, I think it's pretty safe to say this trend will continue, if not getting worse or better, how you see it. I don't want to say this is a problem, really. Uh, I mean, it's, it's really great that so many people are participating in the Linux development and giving their code and wanting to have upstream. The scalability issue is about how to handle all these patches. Ben, one comment, comment? So does that take into account the um, number of patches per day in each development cycle? Because the cycles are not always consistently long. So does that show you? No, it's, it's per cycle. And what I want to mention, if you see these, these graphs of, of uh, patches going into a cycle, please consider that they're usually not counting the merges, which I think is okay, because if you do other statistics, then it doesn't make sense to have merges. But for maintainers, merges mean work. Sometimes, quite, sometimes they're easy, but sometimes they can mean, qu qu mean quite a lot of work. So this should, be ta should have that in your back as well. Also that the patch, uh, statistics are mainly about accepted patches, and you have, until you accept a patch, there's rejected patches, there's a lot of noise on the mailing list. This is so far not counted. I have an idea how to measure that, uh, at least for subsystems using patchwork, but uh, patchwork needs to be a little bit extended. So I would need to talk to developers about that. So maybe we will have statistics about that in the future, but for now it's mainly about accepted patches. 
and which doesn't show what uh, work went into not accepted patches or whatever. And I also want to mention that when I, like I, my graphs start from version 3.0 and to my personal feeling, the situation was, not, was far from perfect at that time. So um, yeah, this scalability thing got really worse from a situation which was not good. Um, so patches can have tags, which I like a lot because they, they shift away work from a maintainer. So people can say act by, reviewed by, or tested by. So here are those numbers. Uh, again, the zigzag lines per cycle. And uh, let's simplify this a little and have linear functions for that. And um, yeah, I was a bit frustrated when I saw them because one, one tag which is really important for me as a maintainer is a tested by. So I can do, I, I get patches for a lot of hardware I've never seen. So I really have to do visual review and I have to rely mostly on the patch author that it works as intended. So if another user comes in and say it's tested by, it works for me as well, this is really helpful, but it's basically a flat line. Although the number of patches really has increased. Again, we know that graphs there. So I think uh, um, there could, there's room for improvement. I was also surprised that the number of act buys did not raise because we have an increasing number of patches and act by is also used for maintain, by maintainers to allow to enter their subsystem from another subsystem. So I would have expected that this number goes up as well. It doesn't. I think this has a little bit to do, there's one graph which is a little bit uh, giving hope that reviewed by go up, went up. So I think because we don't have a clear case between act by and reviewed by, this, is, uh, this not going up is a little bit hidden by, by the reviewed by going up. So reviewed by going up is nice to see and really helpful, but uh, you see that we still have a huge gap and the slope is not even not uh, the same slope as here. So while it helps, it's not really improving a lot. It's, it helps to not get worse, so to say. And also there's the fact that uh, one patch can have a lot of tags, so multiple tested by, multiple reviewed by. So I, I, ideally, this would be a good standard case. So I just had a graph. How many patches do have a tag? At least one tag, some kind of tag. Yeah, Ben? Kernel CI, you mean? If I know what was tested, yeah, could be an idea. Um, so, well, there's, the good thing is the patch, you see that at 3.0 times, like a, a little more than 20% of all the patches had at least one tag, while Today, we're approaching 40% of all patches have at least one tag. So that's the good news is that it increased. And if we wait for another five years, another maybe 50% of all patches will have a tag. Yeah, th I don't call this awesome. Uh, which also means that all the patches not having a tag are mainly left to the maintainers uh, doing the review and making sure that things do not break. Um, and with the patch number of patches that increasing, this is really, really a lot of work, and it's increasing. And I see, I do see, a problem there, which can also be expressed like this. So this is the the number of authors. Uh, this is these statistics are based on on Git data mining, and each patch has an author and a committer. And uh, for me, the committer here is uh, basically the maintainer, the person who decides, yes, this patch goes to, to some upstream tree and then at the very end ends up at Linus tree. I didn't take into account the maintainer's file because it's, uh, it is helpful in cases, but it's also outdated in other cases. And I didn't find this information not trustworthy enough, enough to base my statistics. So I just wanted to see who's actually uh, putting the patches into some tree. 
And you can also see here that the number of new of authors is increasing, which also means educational work. You have to teach them a few things and all, all this. While the number of people committing to the tree is a little increasing, but uh, given the numbers we've seen above, I would like to see another slope here. At the very, one very direct outcome out of this, um, also, no, sorry, I forgot a slide. Um, small hope, the number of uh, review people doing reviewed buys and are not actually a committer themselves, so no do we, people doing reviews and not being a maintainer, that number luckily increases, but uh, still it's not the same slope as this slope above, so it helps, again, I think, to make things not go a lot worse, but uh, we're now close to, to closing the gap between those two lines. A direct outcome you can see here from my personal, so I take all, uh, this is all about my subsystem, I won't uh, <laughs> bash other ones, but I don't want to bash other ones. It's, it's just what, what ha it's a direct outcome of all of that. You can see in three, this is the backlog of unprocessed patches I have in my queue. So you can see I started uh, with 3.8 uh, and there was a new maintainer and yeah, t totally motivated and I will keep my backlog close to zero, every patch will be processed and yeah, you can, you can pretty much see when I gave up. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, this was probably the first time when I thought about uh, giving up completely also as a maintainer because you, you get a lot of pressure from people. I, I understand that developers have deadlines and have been said, yeah, uh, we need this in that cycle, and you feel that pressure. And so that was, that was one of the times where I thought, okay, I, I reconsidered and did not give up, but I, have, uh, but I had to let go of this, I keep this patch count close to zero thing, because it, I, I didn't scale that, that much. I want to make this graph a little bit fairer, because here we're at the 4.8 um, cycle, which just ended, so and it's, I think it's fair to say, let's say the last two cycles are just usual development. Of course I have not processed yet, yet the patches which should go into 4.9. So the next graph will just cut off the right side a little, so the last two development cycles are cut off. Here we are now at 4.6. Ideally, I would think I should have processed all patches which came in until the 4.6 cycle by now. But as you can see, I clearly haven't. And um, it's not even a linear uh, function you can see here. I think it's more like exponential. Um, and I, that's the state it is how. I, I did even get two new sub-co-maintainers, uh, one for the ACPI stuff and one for the I2C Max. Uh, maxing technologies. I'm very happy about them, good people. Not enough to scale. <laughs> ben? I think I'd like to add a comment here is that maintainers are people, they have um, other issues to deal with, and sometimes it does get to the point where you just can't process everything. And with the constant stream of patches in, it gets difficult. Yes. Yep, I will come back to that in two slides. So this is a rough schedule. Uh, so the data I just collected, uh, I show you for my subsystems, I can only collect for subsystems which use patchwork because they have uh, a database when patches go in. So I did this for a few um, subsystems which do use patchwork as well. And um, X4 is quite interesting because this is what I think is uh, what I expected. They have a more or less linear function of that. They even have periods where they keep the backlog constant so nothing adds up anymore. So I think this, I, I think this is what I'd like to see somehow normal. By the way, these are normalized, like this is here 100%. It doesn't say anything about the patches itself, like X4 has a backlog of, of 800 patches by now, I think. RTC Linux is a, lit, a smaller subsystem. Uh, we can maybe call this somehow linear, but there we're talking about 20 patches here, which is not super much. 
For all the other, I think you can see also there is not a linear but more an exponential growth. Part of it is, I think, um, usual development, as I said, because you have to process the recent, most recent patent, patches, but still, I think this goes so back enough that, that I see a worrying trend here about. <laughs> Most people, we, the big mindset give up. <laughs> I don't know. Ben? Uh, does this include patches that need rework? No, that's, that's a problem. Um, so this, uh, so I, I try to, to only select subsystems which use patchwork, well, consistently, so they mark superseded patches as such. So they should be out of this statistics. But uh, yeah, as I said, I'd like to have patchwork extended to have a, a timestamp for when you change the state of a patch. So then you really know how the latency between sending a patch on the mailing list and some state change was. But we need to add that. So in general, I really like LWN, <laughs> but I really don't like that they're always writing this. And uh, luckily, John Corbett was last week at my talk. So uh, I'm interested if he will write this again, that it's a well-tuned machine and there are no process scal scalability issues inside. Sorry, no. Uh, I, I disagree. I, I, we were in a discussion about this. I was, I'm interested what will come out of that. And which I just figured yesterday, I don't want to be called a part of a machine, even a machine or part of a machine. Um, as I said, I was uh, about to give up more than once, and this has to deal with stuff like frustration or stuff like this, so a lot of annoyance also. So there are human factors involved, and I'm, I'm all for that we present the Linux workflow as a stable one you can rely on. Uh, I think we're, it justifies to be described like this, but I don't really like the machine thing. Uh, yeah, because lots of things happening on a personal level. Okay, what does this huge overload mean? Uh, I cannot, although I'd like to, I cannot process patches in a chronological order. Um, I have to do assign priorities and for a random developer, these might look random. <laughs> so this is why I want to mention a few of them here. So you maybe get an idea of what really makes a patch for me more attractive to re review it. And uh, these days a very crucial thing of, is a very human thing. You help me, I help you. So if, if I see people um, cleaning up the I2C subsystem, doing things which affect, are good for a lot of users or review other patches, of course, um, if they need help, I'll be there as much as I can. This is, this is probably a natural thing. Mm. You, I don't know. Maybe you won't be call it completely fair if you don't have time to do that or so, but f f in order to scale somehow, this is, I think, like I said, a natural thing. Then there are patch series, uh, touching a lot of subsystems, cleaning up some, uh, something across the whole kernel, and I scratch is just one small part of it. Of course, then I don't want to be the blocker to have uh, a group effort failing. So um, this is another priority boost. Affected users, I recently spent a little time on, on like uh, interrupt support in I scratch -E, which was used for a better touchpad driver, so it got more responsive. Like this affects all users having a laptop. Okay, this is a priority boost. Or this is something where you say, okay, yeah, okay, I should have this earlier than something other, which is just, I don't know. Well, the worst example would be a white space fix up. <laughs> and of course, uh, yeah, if it's a regression, it automatically, uh, this applies, I think most applies to the whole Linux kernel, but if it's a regression, of course, it needs to be fixed. Uh, sooner than if I have a new driver pending, which by definition cannot uh, cause a regression. Although I, I just might this take this before. New drivers have 
another, there is this thing called the RC1 rule because they cannot cause a regression. You may uh, apply them upstream. I, I'm, I can send this to Linus even after the merge window closed. Um, so this is why I tend to work on drivers a little later than other patches, if I have the time to work on drivers at all. So this is also to keep in mind. And then complexity is for sure an issue. So I am actually, sometimes I have a bit of free time in the evening and say, hey, yeah, I could do some patches. And like other people, I don't know, solve Sudoku or something. And if it's then a huge complex patch and maybe a bit sloppy, uh, ugh, no. And then there's this easy patch which, which looks all right, which is just a small p incremental change and properly documented. So, okay, I'll take this one. I, I, I have to may mention here maybe that uh, currently I maintain the I2C subsystem in my free time. So I, uh, I do, I'm contracted to do Linux work, but sadly the, uh, Currently, it does not allow me to do uh, maintenance work in, in this time. I have been told by, by Greg Crow Hartman that I'm a minority by now. Um, but I think most of the issues I, are also valid for subsystems where the maintainers are paid. They may have a few bit more time to work on patches. Um, but the amount coming in, I think, is still huge enough to cause the one other or other effect I'm describing here. And then there's stuff uh, only maintainers care about. I re we have one super outdated mechanism where I need to fiddle with power Mac drivers, which I, it's, so, it's, it's in the way for some refactoring and it uses, uh, well, it uh, occupies memory for every user who uses Linux with I2C and nobody, uh, nobody uses it. So I like to have it gone. And this is not the kind of work usually developers use or the people I get patches from use because they have like new SOCs, want a new driver or fix that. But I really think it should be done. And stuff which I would like to do to scale better, like. Uh, Having the I2C core, which is now one huge C file, I would like to split it up so I can say, okay, now we have ACPI, now we have device tree parts, and I can have separate um, maintainers for that. I can't even do that work, although it would help me to scale better. Uh, at least I didn't find the time. And all the stuff like documentation, you, you can read that for yourself. And there, literally, this is, if developers are complaining that their patches get delayed for months, which is a usual, uh, latency I have in my subsystem currently, this is really delayed for years in part. So I have this nice I2C transfer tool written for t to do I2C debugging. It has been used by a lot of people and they were happy about it, And uh, but they have to pick it from, from the lists. It's not in the official I2C tools repository, repository because I cannot find the time to write a man page for it. That's all it just needs. But I think this, this part will improve soon. So last week I told a bit about what like we as a community should do, what maybe organizations could do. I'm really, really calling out for organizations to step more into reviewing. So like the first part we told, not only companies, but mainly companies, so like join the community, share the code, and. They're, do, they're doing that now, which is awesome. But I think that we need to now to do the next part, which is take part in handling all this code and make sure it works. I think we are there yet, but this is more like the bigger scale on the more personal scale, what helps maintainers. There's one, there's a small group of users, which I say here as users of patches, which are not necessarily developers, but need a feature, collect it from the list, apply it and see if it works and solves a problem for them. And I'd le really encourage to those to give tags, like tested by, I told, I thought it was, I said it was pretty important for me as a, a maintainer, or at least to say, hey, I'm interested in, in that patch. It, it really solves an issue for me. 
because I said before, the, the number of users affected by a patch is uh, some, has an influence on the priority. And then the more people saying, the, I need this patch, or I even tested it, that is a priority boost. So if, if that happens, please do. Um, for developers, yes, please always give me only your, your best shot. I, have totally, I totally understand if you may, m are missing experience, this is okay and we can deal with that and hopefully the whole community can deal with that. But sometimes people are, are sloppy. They, I know they know better and they still don't do it. And this is uh, the opposite of a priority boost. This is really annoying and, and have, yeah. Th those patches, I th <laughs> might not be also completely fair, but might be human to just if they really go at the end of the queue. And um, I do understand that developers have deadlines to meet and stuff like this, but I hope I point out that I'm not very rich of having time also. So we have, let's deal it out, deal it somewhere. And really for, for people working at companies, if you have in-house knowledge, try to use that first, instead of waiting for me to answer your patch. And uh, this is what might come out of it anyhow. If I see somebody from, from a bigger company, I know, I know that has other uh, engineers working on I2C, my first reaction might be, please go to that person and have work together to give me something which is more um, reviewed already. Ben. Yeah. After about the third time, I'm going to start ignoring you because I'm fed up with loads of devs who are trying to fix this shit. Yeah. And yes, yeah, stuff like, like you tell them in one place that this is not okay and people fix this one place but don't recognize themselves. That's a few, five times more in their patch. And so self education is, is really one key thing. So, what I also. I uh, recommend is if you're new to a subsystem, just dig, I mean, we have public development. So go to, to the archive of that list and watch, uh, read the reviews of other drivers just before, shortly before you. See what was mentioned there, see what was criticized there, and see, check if it applies to your patch. So you can reuse that review, and uh, when you supply the, maybe your patch again, it's in a better state, and which is a uh, if it looks nice and if I see, okay, all these issues which usually come up are not present there, yeah, it's good, it's, it's, it's attractive. <laughs> so. Yeah, then sometimes this, this is true for maintainers as, as well. Uh, I wonder how many tedious tasks are still done manually, act by, completely written out. Uh, I have keyboard macros for that and stuff like this. So there are a lot of easy things and really, really pay attention to tedious tasks or where you, where you can have keyboard shortcuts or small scripts which can make your lives and easier and reduce the sloppiness which makes my life easier stuff stuff like this and um, i run all patches i apply through my code checkers so you may save a review round of review if you do as well i have to admit you you like check patch is an obvious one sparse match coccinelle um, you have to a little bit to learn to read. There are sometimes false positives and there are sometimes reasons where you say, okay, it's saying that, but I, for, for reasons I do it like this way. But in general, um, their warnings should be paid attention to. Ben? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, git hooks, uh, this is, that was, I mentioned them for maintainers should really use them for developers. Yeah, well, why not? And one thing I really, really like to mention is a review your own patch is such a good thing because if, if you wait like, and this is the case for I2C currently, if you wait for four weeks 
and nothing happens, and just re resend your patch without looking at it. Um, at that time, you might be a reviewer as well, because and I, at least from my experience, uh, I forgot so many things or um, have a different viewpoint that I'm actually able to, to send a version two just by looking at my own patch. And this, again, is a priority boost. If I see uh, that you yourself have looked again at the code and found issues, and I know oh, I have, don't have to deal with them anymore, and you're actively working on that, um, yeah, creates attractiveness. And I think it's a good, good method to, uh, to scale better on, on, on this level. And the obvious one, if you have free time and interest, um, take, take part in reviewing other patches. Um, this this will help me. I think this will help you because it will in, it, it takes more skill to review a patch than to write one. So we, you will work on your your skills, and this can improve your patch again. So I um, I understand that it needs needs time, but if you if you are attracted uh, interested in that, so try to do that. I think it helps on many levels. And the one thing I might be a bit of a paradigm shift, I don't know, but I think, you know, this classical ping people is, is a bit outdated. Maintainers file, or no, submitting patches is a, a says, oh, you could ping, ping every two weeks. For me, this is so not realistic to have a patch usually done in two weeks. I would like say ping me in two months. But then again, I use patchwork, so all patches are tracked. So. I don't forget patches. I just don't have the time. And um, especially with pings on a private level, I, I, I know I understood that it's not my fault that uh, there are so many patches left unprocessed because I don't, I on my own don't have enough manpower and the i squared she list is not active enough in reviewing. Because as Thomas Gleixner said, it's a pass-by subsystem. You go there, drop your driver, and move on to SPI or whatever. Unlike net complex networking devices where the, where's a higher tendency to stay and keep on working. Um, so I don't have time to reply. I'd rather review patches at that time. There's, a, as I use patchwork, I don't forget patches. So there's nothing gained, but even although I know I, I'm not a failure, it still adds a little bit to the frustration, especially if, if, if it's written privately and um, giving various reasons. I know them, I understand them, but I can't help. <laughs> I can't help that. So this is, uh, this might be true. I, 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 cons I consider, well, asking the kernel community, maybe we can just discuss here a little more, but I think pings should be re- Re-evaluated, Gerd. So uh, I have two comments there. The first one is: so what what should I do if I have a patch and it fixes some serious issue? You want you you really like to have yeah. the, the kernel at RCA time or something like that. Uh, that's the first thing. And the second one is: yeah, I know some maintainers don't like the pings. Other maintainers don't like to reset patches and want pings. Yeah. Okay. I I see. Yeah, that might be a problem. We, we not, we, I see, I see, I see, I see. Okay, yeah, we, we, this is the heterogeneous uh, way of handling things in the kernel is often a problem. I see that, yes. Um, with ping here, I really mean just ping and nothing more. If you say ping because, this is a really issue. So I, I, have mo I have sympathy for that. Um, or ping, I really need that, can I help in getting this upstream very fast, or stuff like this. But giving a reason, giving a good reason is uh, way better than a standard ping, which is, but most of the pings I get, it's just ping, sometimes it's a gentle ping, but uh, <laughs> a reason would be a lot more helpful, yeah. So what does it mean for the I2C subsystem? I, I, this is just repeating the slide from what a maintainer is. Uh, we had that before. I just want to bring that back to your attention. 
And this is how I will change the role in the future. I will really, really point out that just one, I'm just one of the software architects. I'm just one of the patch reviewers and I'm one of the software developers. And I really push back to the community. So if people ask me, can you review this patch? I will, I will point out, ask the list. It's, I'm just one of them. And um, so I can have, and like, like other people on the list, I will be mainly reviewing patches which I'm personally interested in. This is another human factor. Like I said, it's my free time. And um, to reduce the frustration level, I will just focus on things where I see a personal benefit to it. On a, another side note, I might try to get some more funding to do the work, which will, of course, then um, allow me to, to work also, uh, also on other patches with a different, uh, from, from other areas. But also, I, to do that, I need time for that. So I have to cut on these issues I just strike through. I'm, in general, I like this work. I'm totally happy to be the patch committer, maintainer, and work out how to get things upstream and how to deal with other maintainers and even patch reviewing. I do like this stuff, but uh, I have my limits. And um, yeah, I will, to scale somehow, I will focus more on higher levels, like how do we solve this problem as a community? And not, I will working on higher levels, not so much on patch level. I've, as you probably have seen, this won't work out, at least for me. So what it means uh, for most of the patches, sorry, but this will <laughs> even more uh, bigger latency. I'm pushing back. I'm really calling out the community to find solutions for that. Uh, the four advantages, I, I like the first one very much. <laughs> I want to stay sane and I don't want to run around deeply frustrated all the day. There were times that it was like this, it, it was really, I felt bad all day because I knew all these patches and they were important to people and I could just couldn't cope with it. Yeah, and as I said before, I, I will really focus on trying to solve this in, on a higher levels because I think that's a big next huge step we as a community need to take. So this is what I have for you today. Um, I think we have a little bit time left for, for further questions. I'll be here all day, so ask me questions if you find me. And I would, a little bit of advertisement. Um, there's a GPL BOF lunch today. I, I will be there. We will meet at the lobby, and people like Bradley Kuhn and Harald Welte will be there to discuss various things about uh, GPL issues. You know there's been a huge threat about it somewhere. And uh, <laughs> One thing we learned from that is uh, we need to get people around one table and talk about it and get more understanding of each other. And this is one part of it. I'm looking forward to it. So another place to meet me. And maybe you're interested as well. So this is it for now. Thank you very much. And uh, let's start the question round. <laughs> Venus. Yeah. And uh, in, in that sense, board files were better for subsystem maintainers, but they were really crappy for the community at large. But the, the way we have solved the board file issue with the um, yeah, board files are for ARM and power and was also <coughs> not really an Intel problem, but the way we solved it was actually pushed more work on the subsystem maintainers. Yes.
very nice if you go to the device tree discuss list and if there is any bindings or something that you're familiar with, spend a little time on reviewing that and making nasty comments and uh, nice comments to people who submit new, new bindings. That yeah. would be very appreciated. Thank you. Yeah, I agree. So uh, device tree bindings are easy to create but not easy to maintain. <laughs> So there are some questionable ones entering the tree, so this is definitely a problem pushing that to subsystem maintainers. And I totally see the ICPI thing. Where I come more from the device tree part, so I feel more at home at this one, but I'm so happy about the Intel guys helping me with ACPI where I don't really know a lot of things, especially when it gets too complex. So. <laughs> the, the thing is, the, the good thing the device tree people are doing is that uh, uh, there's like a, a real specification going on and they're trying to standardize a bunch of things. Yeah. But the subsystem maintainers still have to deal with all the specific, specific that uh, and the hardware and so on. So, so we have a bit of a scalability problem, but uh, it's added on top of this burden that uh, Wolfram is showing here. And uh, that, that was very unfortunate, I think. Hmm. Ben. So I was going to have a couple of comments on maybe. So I actually gave you this problem in the first place. <laughs> <laughs> so I actually put a lot of actual what's going on. Um, <coughs> but there's also a couple of issues from the developer side that I don't think is being addressed yet. Um, so most of my work as a consultant is short term project where you go in, do some work fixing stuff for people, and you get some patches out of it. Uh, so, so far, I think the process is to post the patches as ROC or something and hope that somebody will find them <laughs> by Googling around or using patchwork or stuff. This is... Uh Well, subsystems using patchwork may advertise that they, you, you just enter the search substring of your driver name and it will list you all unprocessed patches for that driver. Um, that might work for such subsystems, but not everyone is using patchwork. Um, I, I do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well. Mm. One other idea I'd like, I think it came up at some kernel summit, is like you have an email address you can send patches to and it will run it through code checkers and do some cross builds for various types where often things go wrong and get the response so you know before sending to a mailing list if there are issues with that. Um, I think that would be useful. I don't know if the zero, zero bot guys are interested in that, but it would be for sure thing a useful useful thing to have for developers. Yeah. They, they monitor lots of mailing lists. Yeah, I do. Okay. At least Linux Media, uh, I would expect to actually use as well. Okay. I regularly see 
Yeah, okay, okay that happens. <laughs> Honestly, but in a perfect, in an ideal, for, as, that might, it's good already, but in an ideal solution, I don't prefer to have the version, the first version of the patch on the mailing list be already be covered. So first, so in a developer sends it to this address, fixes the things, and then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I agree. Having having the mailing list monitored monitored is a good start, yes. Well, it's just as easy as create a simple mailing list and ask the mirror bot to monitor that mailing list. No, because already it does that. But yeah, it's the emails you're about to fail. You're yeah, well, oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I, I, I guess I or someone just needs to talk to the people. If it's a mailing list or addresses, then a technical yeah. detail, yes. Other questions? I would say this uh, zero lay box that we use for, like, I push a branch and get it built. It, it's a very good post review to get everything tested and integrated yeah. and make sure all the small uh, errors get sorted out. Yeah. Now I'm just very worried that it would disappear one day. Yeah. <laughs> because that would be a disaster. Yeah, 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 that will cause a lot of issues, I agree. So let's go into the coffee break, I think. Thank you very much. See you around.